Greetings, our Hebrews, black brothers and sisters. This is the high priest, L.D. Smith, the watchman on the wall. As always, family, grab that King James. But first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the whole family. Israel, that being said, family, we're going to go right into our teaching. Now, you know, now you guys know how we do it here. I ask you guys to read along with me, think about the word, and listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. And I know that the most I would give you a clear understanding. All right. That being said, now we're going to go right into our teaching now. Remember now, I told you guys about the two families that God chose. He chose Judah and Israel, all right? Okay, now we're going to uh, show you here that how, how merciful God is. God is a merciful God, all right? Now we're going um, we to go right into our teaching. Now we're going to get started here. Uh, okay, we're going to get started. We're going to go, uh, we gonna, let us go to the book of um, Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah ch chapter 49. Now to show you here how how merciful God is, God God loves His people. Uh, I may as well just go ahead and start over here at forty nine. Forty nine and um, and uh, let's start with forty nine and seven. Let's start the first. It says, "Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One, to whom man des despises, to him." Whom the uh, nation abhor, to a servant of rule, rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall uh, worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. See that? Now look what he says here. He said, Thus saith the Lord. In in uh, acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee. See that? I have heard thee, and in the day of salvation I have helped thee. And I will pre preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant for the people to establish the earth, and cause the inhabitants uh, the desolate heritage. That thou mayest may say to the uh, prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the way, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that has mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all the mountains a way, and a highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from afar, from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sam. Simon, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Fear God is saying he's merciful. He's going to have, he's going to have mercy on the afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me. And my Lord has forgotten me. Now Zion is a, is a city that was uh, at a point there in Jerusalem, where David, you know, uh, had built his 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 place there, called the city of city of Zion. But this here is what the uh, the city of Zion says here: "Forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me." Say, can a woman? Forget her suckling child, that she should have not compassion on the son of her womb. Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hand. Thy wells are continued before me. See here, he's saying that he will not forget the city. The city of David says he won't. Zion. Zion is the city of David. 
They was crying there saying that God had forgotten me. God said, no, I will never forget you. He is a compassionate God. He has mercy. Now let us keep on going. Now let, let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And we're going we're gonna to show you here how, how faithful God is. God is faithful. He's merciful to his people. Psalm 119. Let's look at 100. Let's let's look at um uh let's look at oh let's look at let me see let's start with with, with uh 138 Psalm 119 138 it says that testimony that thou hast command are righteous and very faithful see that my zeal has consumed me because my enemy have Forgotten thy word. Thy word is very pure. Therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised. Yet do not I forget thy precepts. 42. Look what it says here. Thy righteousness is as everlasting. Righteousness and the law is the truth. See that? The law is the truth. God's word is the truth. I don't care what anybody tells you. Don't let nobody take you from what the word is saying. God's word is the truth. Now let's keep on going here. Now let's look. Let's stay there. Now let's let's go a little further. It says, "Trouble and anguish have taken hold of me, yet thy commandments are my delight." Let's keep on going. The righteousness of that testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. See that? It's all about the Most High. It's all about what he has said. We have to. We have to obey what he has said. We have to comply to all of his words. I cry with my whole heart. Hear me. Oh Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep that testimony. He's the only one that can save us. And see, we gain strength from his testimony. His testimony is what he have already done. That's why I always tell us to tell, tell, tell you guys, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back and see what our God has done in the past. Because we do, we know what? He does not change. He does not change. Now let's keep on going. Now we're going to go a little further here now. Let's go to Daniel. Let me still want to go to Daniel. Let me see. Let me back up here. Let me back up. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter, 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 chapter uh, 31. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I, I, I came down to my other scriptures. That I wanted to wait for, but we'll go back. We'll get back to him. Deuteronomy chapter chapter thirty one. Now watch this right here. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter thirty one. Let's let's do seven and eight. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. See that? And the Lord he it is that goeth before, huh? Before thee. He will what? Be with thee. Huh? God is faithful. God is merciful. He's saying here, he's going to be with you. He will not fail thee. Boy, that's, I mean, he comes through every time on everything that he has said. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. His love, huh? His kindness toward we, his people. 
That's what you got to think about. That's what you have to know. Because we got we got some catas catastrophic events that is, is going to take place. And if you don't know this, and if you don't believe this, and if, and if this is not in your heart, then baby, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. But your heart won't fail you when you got this word, when you're trusting God. Everything else around you will fall. You might even fall, but God says, I will raise you back up with my right hand. I will, I will uphold you with my right hand. He says, neither forsake thee. Just like I said in, in other teachings, you know, the younger generation, they got a, they got old saying, I got your back, got your back. No. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. God is the only one that, that has our back. The Most High, he's the one that has our back. He's the one that we can trust. We can trust him with everything. We have to. Now look what he says. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. See that? See, fear is going to be all over this world. It is. But God is telling his people, I'm here to tell you that God is with his people. God is saying and has said and has shown in the past that he has always delivered when it came to he, him and his people. He have always saved his people. Now look what he says. Then we're going we gonna to keep on going here. Let me, let me see. That one. Yeah, let's keep on going. I'm, I'm going to go on down here. He said, and Moses wrote this law. And delivered it unto the priest, the son of the Levites, the son of Levi, which bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of evening, of every seven years, in a solemn, solemnity of the, uh, year of release and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now here we can see here that God has made a covenant and now that he is telling them at the end of the seventh year we can have a feast and you do this throughout your whole generations because you can trust God that he's going to take you through. God has to save you in, in order for you to have these, these feasts uh, and, and, and to carry it on out through all your generations. He has to save us. He, has, he, he saved them and he's going to save us. Now let's keep on going. Now we're going to go a little further. Let's go to um, Psalm 119 again. Let's go to Psalm 119. Let's go to uh, one, um, let's go to 160. Psalm 119. Let's go to uh, 160 here. Well, let's read verses uh, 59 and 60, okay? We might read all of this. Look, all looks good. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgment endures forever. You don't see that? You will know what's true. God's word is true. God's word is true. Every word is true. That word is true. From the beginning. From the beginning, you can go and look at it. It say God said, and so it was. So it was. Every word God had, God had said from the beginning is true.
Oh, he's a merciful God. He's a loving God. How he love us. Even in our frail faults. Even, even, even in our, 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 our bad behavior, he still loves us. See, I love you. I love you. Even though you did wrong, I'm going to punish you for it, but I'm going to use mercy. I'm going to punish you, but I'm going to still have mercy on you because I love you. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going now. I, uh, let's let's go ahead and um, I started at one sixty tonight. Let's see. Let me see. That I want to continue with this. One nineteen, one sixty. Okay. All right. He says. Um, well, let's read it. He says, "Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in all." Of thy words, I rejoice at thy words as one that findeth great spoils. See that? Just like when you find a diamond, you find a bar of gold. Oh, look what I found! Oh, boy! Oh, I'm so happy now! I'm so happy now! Yes, yeah, this is what he's saying. He rejoices at his word. One should want to hear this word day and night. Night and day. That's why Joshua say, "Thou shalt meditate day and night, all the time, all day long." This word should be in our, in our mouths and in our hearts, because if you think about it long enough and you say it long enough, you will do it, whether it's right or wrong. You will do it. You'll find yourself doing it. And see, that's how, how it should be. When you find yourself doing the word, you should re rejoice and say, oh, Father, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's doable. We can do it. It's doable. Let's keep on. Let's keep on. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. And watch this right here. Proverbs chapter 30. God is merciful. God is true. All of his words are true. Proverbs chapter 30. Let's read verses 5 and 6. Let's see what that says. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. See that? He's a shield. What does a shield do? It, it, it covers you. It protects you. It keeps things from getting to you, harmful things. But you got to put your trust in a shield. When you see a man out there with a shield and a sword and they fighting, the other man bring his, bring his spear down, and she, I mean sword down, try to hit him, he take that shield and put that shield up there and that shield block him. It, it, it blocks it. Then he try to hit him, and then his opponent take his shield and block him. That's what a shield does. It deflects any harm that might be coming to you and I. He's a shield to us. And see, if if the if the if the warriors or the gladiators didn't believe in and trust their they shield, they wouldn't have it out there. They wouldn't. But you have to know that God is with us and we have to trust him that he's going to make everything all right. That he's going to make everything all right. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell y'all tell y'all about something here that happened to me. Um, I, uh, Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you guys another time. I'm, I'm not going to share it right now. I'm going to share it with you another time. But I'm, I'm going to tell one of my, one, one of my armor bearers, you know, what, I'm, what I was going to tell you guys. I'm going to tell him that way that I can re remind you guys when we meet, you know, 
because we're going to have, a, we're going to set it up where we're going to have to meet. I'm, I'm about to meet with you guys here sometime real soon. Um, I'm going to try to give you guys a couple, 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 two or three months, you know, at least a couple of months, you know, to uh, save some money and so that we can come together where I can uh, minister unto you, you know, in person because I don't know how long that it, uh, it's going to be before we're going to be shut down and shut in. And I, I do want to try to meet with all you guys before this time comes. But in, in, anyway, this is something that is in the making, and um, I'm going to try to announce it here within the oncoming weeks, if the most I permit it. If not, then uh, if things get too bad, then we can't meet, then uh, that's the most high doing. All right? Now, let us uh, continue here. Um, we have Proverbs chapter 30. Verses 5 and 6. And look what he says here. He says, Add thou not unto his word, lest he what? Reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. See that? You can't add to his word. And see, people be doing all kinds of stuff. Adding to God's word. You know, saying all, 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 all kinds of things. I read to you today when Saul, uh, well, it was in another teaching. After after David had wanted to build the most high house, the most high told, told David that uh, he was going to rest with his fathers and then a uh, son was going to come out of out of his bowels. Uh, and uh, He's, he's going to be in my house. Now, that being said, God is not through with you until your until your job is done. You know, it has been said that God has God is God is through with the high priest. But uh I have to finish my job. God God is not through with me. And if anyone used any common sense at all, just use common sense and go back and read what God has done with others. And you will see the only one that didn't finish his job and God was through with him, was a uh, uh, Saul. Now, yes, there were, there were my other ancestors that went astray, but God always raised up another. He always raised up another man. Always. See, so, so, so what I'm saying is, God will, when, when God is through with you, and God has rejected you, you got to die. You got to die. You have to. You have to leave off the scene. I'm still here. Go back and do your own reading, and see. See, so so no matter what someone may have said or, 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 or what, but I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Why? Because God has God has given me the prophecy. He has given me the vision. We're waiting on Elijah. I'm going to see him with these right here. But see, some, like I say, some, some are going to perish because you have added to his word and you have taken away from his word. And I just showed you that every word of God is true. It is pure. It is pure. Every word of God is pure. I'm going to read it again. See, because you can't be running back and forth. See, because you don't know your butt from a hole in the ground. You got to sit down and sit and, and get up on the, the, the right wing of God and receive his word. Look what it says. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Not him and some, not him and some other entity. Look what he says: "Thou addest not unto his word." With an S, words. Lest he reprove thee, and thou. Be found a liar. Watch it. Watch what I tell you. 
See, don't the word make you out of, out of a lie. See, don't the word make you out of a lie. Mother of heaven. See, don't it? This word is going to make a lot of them out of a lie. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. But let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. I'm, I'm going to keep right on going. Let's look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 17. And watch this right here. Y'all want to go, let's see, I want to do 1 Kings now. Yeah, let's go to 1 Kings. And uh, at the 1 Kings, we'll go ahead and close out the, this teaching here. And we'll move on. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 17. Now watch this right here. 1 Kings 17. Let's look at verses 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her household did eat many days. Huh? God don't change. God is faithful. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of all fail. There is no failure in God. Did you hear what I say? There is no failure in God. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah, which he spake by Elijah. Mm, mm, mm. Father, help us. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. The boy died. The boy died, but to show you how, how faithful God is, huh? God will prove himself to you that there's nothing impossible for me. God will prove to you and I that he is God and he is. He's going to prove that. He's going to prove that. That that which he started with, that is what he's going to end with. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to, to call my sins, to remember, and to slay my son? Are you came to prophesy evil against me because of my sins? Are you coming to bring judgment on me because of my sin? Now my, now my son has died. Is that the reason why you're here? And he said unto her, Give me that son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abound and laid him upon his own bed. And he carried and he cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon this uh, widow with whom I sojourn? By slaying her son? And see, everybody should know, even the Christians, they'll read this over here, and they'll read over it. But yet and still, they'll go back and tell, they'll, uh, I guess they call them permissions or, or whatever they call them, you know, the, the people that are in their congregation. Oh, the devil did this, and the devil do, did that, and it clearly says it, and they're reading it, and don't even see it. That God is the one that will bring evil upon you. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. The soul had left him. That's what happens when a person dies. The soul leaves the body. 
And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? And Elijah took the child and brought him down on, out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now by this I know the words that, that, that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is true. See that? See that? See that? Now, I, re I remember uh, a guy, uh, the most I came to me and told, told me and showed me vision that he was going to die. And I, and I told him. And he, he, he uh, gave a, a sacrifice. And I, I burned on the altar, prayed for him, and he died. He was dead for almost an hour. And the most I brought him back. They put pedals on him. After his wife took him to the hospital, uh, took him to the hospital. He was dead. He was unresponsive. He was dead for almost an hour, if not an hour. And they put him on a gurney and then rolled him into the hospital and they put the paddles on him, brought him back. He was, he was in the hospital for, for about uh, pretty much about two weeks. But God brought him back. The word that is in your mouth. Huh? That's what the woman said. Didn't she say that? She said that the words that was in Elijah's mouth was the truth. You can't, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. I know what the Most High told me. I told him. And he lives today because the word of the Most High is true. So family, we're gonna we gonna close right there. We're gonna end on that one. You guys know how we do it at the end of the broadcast. We come together with one voice and one mind. Alright? Let us go on the count of three. One, two, three. One word, one God, one people, one love. Jesus. All praise, all praise, all praise. Family, I tell you, go home and listen to this video. One of the, somebody uh wrote in one of their comments and, and they said rewind, rewind, but they going back listening to it over and over. And see, that's what you have to do. You have to rewind it and listen to it over and over and let that word penetrate down inside your heart up here. Not here. Get it here. And then get that word in your mouth. Huh? And you begin to speak that word. And you speak that word, and you got that word here, and you find yourself doing that word. All praise. So until next time, we say we love your family. Try to get some rest. Shalom.